Hi, my name's Cy Horton and I'm an engineer for Farrow UK. During this tutorial, what I'd like to do is go through some of the basic principles of the Orthophoto application within Farrow Scene. So first thing to note is the location of the app itself. Now it all depends as a user whether you prefer to use the new interface as I've got on my screen here or whether you prefer to use the classic interface. Either way, if you're using the new interface to locate whether the app is there in the first place, if you click on the app icon up here, that will then take you into the apps and you'll see that the ortho photo generator is loaded. If it's not, then you go to the apps, locate the FPP file or turn it on. So in here, if I go to apps, if it wasn't there, it would basically mean that it was select as unactive. If I click on that there, it will load in the app, click close, and I've got the ortho photo generator for me. I could work in this interface or similarly I could work in the classic interface. Same thing here, the icon is located on the toolbar and if it's not there you simply go into the apps and you turn on the option there. So what is the ortho photo generator? The ortho photo allows you to create high quality multi-layered TIFF images which if viewed in something like Windows Preview you'll only see a single layer but if you take them into more advanced software such as Photoshop you can start to play around with the RGB values of the multi layers of the TIFF image. To create an ortho photo you first need to have the data in a good format on the screen and you also need to use clipping boxes. In addition to this you should also create a project point cloud. Now I for speed have already created my project point cloud but if I click on the update button when I've created it I've turned on eliminate duplicate points but I've also applied close surfaces and full color detail. If you've watched previous tutorials, you'll realize that using these two options here, for closed surfaces, we use voxel technology, so the pixels expand to meet their neighbors. Then, if we turn on full color, what it will do is that we use all the pixels from the photographs to apply to the point cloud. So in effect, we could scan at a setting of 1 over 32 as a resolution of 49 millimeter point spacing. Typically in the past, we'd have had a very pixelated color image, but now using full color, we can apply all the color to that image. Also, if you are working on a big job, if you do run out of disk space because it needs a high degree of caching, then point this towards a temporary external hard drive to create your project point cloud. So I've done mine already, and now what we're going to do is move on to look at creating some ortho photos. A couple of settings to look at. On the screen here, you can see I've got a rather nice building that I'm gonna use. And all I've done for speed is I've got rid of some of the scans around the back, but we do have this in its entirety. So I'm just gonna set my center of rotation on the front. Now when I stop, you can see the quality is pretty good. The first thing we can look at is actually the point spacing. Now if I go into my scan points, I'm using an adaptive point spacing of 0.5. If, for instance, I were to change that to fixed and set that down to be one pixel and click apply and OK, then what you'll notice is that in certain areas on this right hand edge here, we're starting to get some gappage in our point cloud where the lasers just not hit those points or the angularity has been too tight. If I were to turn on super sampling, it will get rid of some of that, but when I start to move, you'll start to see some of the gapage is still there. Also, you may have noticed that my screen has become very, very jerky because my graphics card can't handle this resolution of scan with super sampling turned on at 4x4 four because four, it's effectively rendering the image 16 times the screen resolution. So if I turn that off, I'm going to right click and go back to my visibility settings, go back into my scan points, set my size to be adaptive, make sure my super sampling is off, click apply and click OK. If you've forgotten how to view a project point cloud, you may remember that right clicking on a cluster will view what is the scan point cloud in scene 6.2. But if you want to view the project point cloud, you have to click on the create 3D view option. That will then load in the project point cloud. If I then go to my ortho photo, you can see here there is nothing in the dialog box. It won't allow me to create the ortho photo. All the settings are grayed out. I can't even see a preview. And that's because we need a clipping box in order to create an ortho photo. We can do that by using the options in here or we can create 
the clipping box outside before we even go into auto photo in here if i click create clipping box it will literally just put one in and then we need to use the manipulation handles to modify it then go to my rotation tools and modify the rotation manipulators to suit if you're in this mode or in this mode and you can't quite see the area if you use your plus and minus symbol on the keyboard or on your numerical keypad it will reduce the size of the manipulators or if you zoom out you can make them bigger so that's one option if i just get rid of that clipping box now in here we can also create a clipping box attached to a surface so if i click on that option there and i want to put it on this elevation i click and it will create a small clipping box around the area and again we just drag out the clipping box to suit and then you can see in here as soon as i go to this clipping box all the options become available or if i cancel that get rid of that clipping box i could create a clipping box on a surface with a single click which is effectively what we've just done or i can create a clipping box on a surface with three clicks i'm just going to create an arbitrary clipping box around my building i'm going to zoom out i'm going to look at it from the top first off and then what i like to do is just expand the clipping box out to maximum first off so i can see my building then i rotate it to be plane art with the building then all i'm going to do is so i can see the ground level i'm just going to pull this blue manipulator down then we'll go back to the top and then we'll just get our alignment nice and level with the building so you can see here i'm slightly out so i'm just going to tweak that around then when i'm happy i'll zoom back out i'll come up I don't want to pick up the top of the chimney pot so I'm just going to drag that down just roughly to the top and then because I didn't need to go in depth I can just restrict the depth and then as I turn around I can pull in the front just so I'm picking up that bay window on the left hand side you can see where I've trimmed this data I haven't trimmed it very level so I'm just going to level that up on there and there I've got my image now the auto photo works on the projection of a image onto the back face or plane of a clipping box so if I'm orientated to look like that on the screen that's the view I'm going to get if I orientate myself to look like that then that's the view I'm going to get from the clipping box similarly if I'm looking down on the top of the clipping box that's the view I'll get as the ortho photo so all I need to do you go to my back view which is there and I've already orientated this to be nice and square on the screen so again if you've watched previous tutorials what I've done is I've opened up the scan that's looking at the front of the building in a planar view I placed a selective area around the elevation I've right clicked and created a plane and I've orientated that plane to be east in this instance so it means I can use the front back top bottom predefined views here so let's just set that over there and move over so now I've got my view the next thing I tend to do is I'll look at my settings so if I right click on my screen and go to visibility settings and I go to my view first thing I'm going to turn on is super sampling so I'm just going to make this 4x4 I'm next going to go to my scan points and I'm going to make sure it's on adaptive at 0.5 again I can start to change this but what you will find is it starts to get a little bit lumpy on the screen so we're just going to leave it as those settings then we go back to create our ortho photo here's our clipping box we can then decide whether we want to work in pixels per meter or pixels per foot. I'm going to stay in pixels per meter. Now in here, it does require an understanding of what resolution you've used on your scanner. So if you used a low resolution, but you're using a high value in here, then you will start to lose detail on your ortho photo because the pixels just don't exist because you haven't captured them in the first place. Similarly, if you've scanned at a high resolution, you might not want to create a very large ortho photo. So you can balance out what you're doing here. You also get your image size in width and height. So you can play around with these as well. So if I change that one to 2000, you can see that my pixels per meter have changed. Or if I want to set that back, everything's interrelated. Also, because we are dealing with an image, if we were taking that into CAD and using that for drafting purposes, or we're using that to place over a surface in a 3D CAD system, what we can do is we can apply a scale bar. So the scale bar will automatically be added to our image. So when we're happy that we've got our orientation and everything set up, we simply create the ortho photo option we give it a name and then we click save now what this will do is it will start writing out the sub images so if you're going to view that in something like windows viewer then you'll only see the top level image but if you take that into something like photoshop then you can get access to all the layers of the four images below and you can start to modify the colors and depending on what sort of setting you create depends on how many layers to that tiff photo you'll get when it's finished you'll see a message on the screen simply click ok go to your folder where you've created it double click on your image and there you can see we've got our ortho photo now based on the settings that I've used I've done a few other examples here so when this loads up you can see in here I didn't turn on super sampling in this one I did 
but I changed my point spacing a little bit on my view so I've cleared up some of the gappage in the top. This one was done with 100 points per meter with super sampling of 4x4. Four four. So as you can see the imagery there is actually very good. So it's just a case of playing with the settings, outputting them to give you your suitable TIFF image for what you actually need. If we go back into scene now, one of the other things we can start to also do is to play around with the clear view mode. So if I right click on the screen, go to my visibility settings again, click on view, enable clear view, and then I can start to play with how clear the imagery looks on the screen. I'm just going to turn off my super sampling there, so you can see I'm starting to get some definition on the screen to play with clear view check my point spacing, click OK, click on Orthophoto, click on Create and let it do its thing. That's now finished, so we click OK, go back, go into our preview and you can see we've started to pick out some of the details. So we've taken away effectively some of the colour. So if you were taking that into CAD it would be quite easy just to recognise where all the window details are. And again you can play around with the settings to suit yourself. And one last little thing, you might go back to here, I'll turn off my clear view mode click apply and then what I'm going to do turn off super sampling zoom out a little bit and then using this clipping box if I modify the clipping box now what I want to do is just turn it around I'm going to pull it right in tight to this elevation here and I'm going to pull this one in to about here and then if I right click on my clipping box and do clipping box along an axis you can see that the axis is going vertical at the moment I want to go in the x-axis but it's going in the wrong direction so first off we're going to change our spacing to be a meter then I'm going to flip the direction by clicking on negative and turning off positive and then I only really want one clipping box and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to pick up the elevation section and pick up this front projected area if I click OK there's my two clipping boxes now when I go to orthophoto I can pick up on multiple clipping boxes just for speed I'm going to set this down to be 50 pixels per meter and I'm going to put on the scale and create the ortho photo and what we'll call this one is multiple and click save. So now what it's going to do is it's going to create one ortho photo for clipping box one and one ortho photo for clipping box two automatically. That means we don't have to change the settings for each. So if you're doing a multi-story building and you wanted floor plans as ortho photos as TIFFs, rather than doing them individually, you set all your clipping boxes up and then literally press the button and it will give you a separate ortho photo at each level. So here I've made the mistake in that I was looking at the side so hence I was saying you've got to be looking in the direction so all I do to rectify that is I'll flip back to my back view so there's my image go back in click on there click create ortho photo then what we'll do is we'll click on that one click save replace it and then quickly regenerate those two so those have now been created if I go back in I've got multiple where it's looking at the building and then I've got the second clipping box back where you can see it's chopped out that projected gable end. So that about covers the basic principles of orthophoto. You can play around the settings to suit yourself but in principle remember to use your project point cloud. If you've got the time turn on full colour and closed surfaces. Remember to create your clipping box, orientate it to be the view on the screen or you make the same mistake as I've just done there. Go to the orthophoto app, select the relevant clipping box, Make sure all your visibility settings are set up and then create your ortho photo. When doing so, remember the resolution of your scan does have an impact on the pixels per meter that you choose. So don't push the limits too much if you've done low resolution scans. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been of use and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming movies. Also feel free to follow me on Twitter, look for me on LinkedIn and also subscribe to me on this YouTube channel. You can also gain more information from looking at the Faro Knowledge Base, where lots of things like this have been tagged against various articles for support purposes.